So in the previous video, we were looking at how, in case your body has a higher blood glucose concentration, insulin, the hormone, will actually help to lower the blood glucose concentration, right, back to normal. In this particular video, we're going to see what happens if your blood glucose concentration is lower than normal. In some cases, like I've mentioned before, if you are exercising or if you go through periods of fasting where you don't eat food for a certain period of time, your blood glucose concentration will start to decrease because your body is, starting, your body is continuously using up glucose in the blood and eventually it depletes. But that doesn't mean your blood glucose concentration will go down to zero, right? Because if that's the case, then we die. So our body has this homeostatic mechanism to help make sure that in case the blood glucose concentration is lower than normal, we have a way to bring it back up. So the question is how? Same thing. The stimulus is the blood glucose concentration lower than normal. It will be detected by the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas. And in the islets of Langerhans, it's consisting of alpha cells and beta cells, right? Because they are the control centers as well. But in this situation here, it is the alpha cells that are more stimulated because they will secrete more glucagon. Now, I know a lot of students get very confused with this because there's glucose, there's glycogen, there's glucagon. I did not come up with the names, so please do not hate me on this, okay? So sometimes we just have to memorize these kind of things. Glucose is a sugar, which is a carbohydrate. Glycogen is a polysaccharide made up of many glucose molecules. Glucagon is a hormone, and it's made out of proteins. So we have to be a little bit careful with that one. So the alpha cells are the ones that secrete more glucagon, and the beta cells will secrete less insulin. Because the goal here is not to lower the blood glucose concentration, because that's what insulin does. So we want less of insulin. We want more glucagon because glucagon is going to help elevate or increase the blood glucose concentration. Now, the good news over here is when glucagon travels inside the blood towards the effector, it only affects the liver cells. Okay, Insulin can affect liver cells and skeletal muscle cells, but the good news here is glucagon only affects the liver cells. So how does it affect the liver cells? Okay, here's where it becomes a little bit confusing. We have to talk a little bit about chapter 4, cell signaling. If you want to just go back to that particular video uh, in AS, I will link it at the top right corner so you can just do a quick revision. But if you don't want to, I'm just going to do one revision right here as well. Now, cell signaling is what happens when our cell surface membrane of a cell, it has a receptor protein, usually it's like a glycoprotein, and attached to the receptor protein is a G protein, all right? And um, the G protein is just part of the cell signaling mechanism and an inactive enzyme, all right? Under normal circumstances, what happens when the signaling molecule binds to the receptor, it changes the receptor shape, which causes the G protein to move towards the enzyme. And the moment the G protein attaches to the enzyme, by the way, it activates the enzyme and the enzyme will take ATP from within the cell cytoplasm and convert it into something called secondary messenger. And the secondary messenger will begin something called a cascade reaction where it activates enzyme A, which activates enzyme B, which activates enzyme C, which activates enzyme D to amplify the signal, to make the signal in, in the cell stronger. We saw this in chapter 4, by the way. The reason why I'm yapping about this is because we have to look at this more in detail when we are talking about the effect of glucagon on liver cells, right? So, because for the liver cells over here, what actually happens is we have the glucagon, which is the signaling molecule, and on the liver cell surface membrane, it has the glucagon receptor protein. Notice the shape. The shape between the glucagon and the pro receptor protein, they are complementary. There's a G protein nearby, and you have to remember the name of the enzyme as well. The name of the enzyme nearby the receptor is called adenylyl cyclase. Yes, you do have to remember it, by the way. And right now, the enzyme is inactive. It's not doing anything. And you know some ATP is just floating around inside the cell. And also, other things to note is within the liver cell cytoplasm, there is an enzyme. And the name of the enzyme is called glycogen phosphorylase. Now, that enzyme's function is to break down glycogen. And of course, there are some glycogen molecules that I'm drawing here. They are branched. Okay. Now, under normal circumstances, we don't want the glycogen phosphorylase to break down the glycogen. It should only break down the glycogen when it is necessary. 
okay so something has to tell the glycogen phosphorylase hey now you break down the glycogen okay so what is that something so let's talk about this so in this case over here what exactly happens the glucagon will bind to the glucagon receptor protein on the liver cell surface membrane and it causes the receptor shape to change which causes the g protein to activate the adenylyl cyclase and once the adenylyl cyclase is activated the adenylyl cyclase oh i love saying that adenylyl adenylyl cyclase uh, it will take atp and it will convert the atp into something called camp or camp cyclic adenosine monophosphate you can just put the word camp in the exam when you put the word camp in the exam you just have to mention also that the CAMP is a secondary messenger. Mentioning that ATP is converted to CAMP is one mark and mentioning that CAMP is a secondary messenger is a second mark. So please mention that in the exam as well, all right, if they ask you that question. And the CAMP, of course, will begin, the secondary messenger will begin the cascade reaction. And here's the thing, you just have to remember the final enzyme. And the final enzyme in the cascade reaction is glycogen phosphorylase. Glycogen phosphorylase was inactive, right? And in the cascade reaction, I told you what happens. It is supposed to activate it. So now that the glycogen phosphorylase is activated, what can that enzyme do? That enzyme can now break down glycogen. And when it breaks down glycogen into, what does it break it down into? It breaks it down into glucose. And what happens to the glucose molecules? The glucose molecules will diffuse out of the cell back into the blood. And when it goes into the blood, what happens to your blood glucose concentration? Your blood glucose concentration will increase. That's essentially how glucagon affects the cells. All right. So this is a perfect example of cell signaling and signal transduction that is happening within the liver cells. And by doing so, the liver cells will break down the glycogen into glucose and, and the glucose, what happens to it? It goes back into the blood. Why? Remember, never lose sight of why we are doing this. We are doing this so that when the glucose goes into the blood, the blood glucose concentration increases and it goes back to normal. Now, in some cases, the liver cells may not have enough glycogen or no glycogen. So if the glucagon binds to the receptor, uh, there's no glycogen to break down, right? So, you know, uh, the, uh, the, then your blood glucose concentration, there's no glucose to enter the blood, correct? And this is dangerous. But here's where your liver cells are pretty spectacular. It can also do a process known as gluconeogenesis, okay? Now, what does gluco mean? Gluco, in this case, means glucose. Neo means new. Genesis means create. So, it just means that the liver cells are able to create new glucose molecules. Now, immediately, students will go, what? Does that mean we do photosynthesis? <laughs> no, we don't, okay? Cre gluconeogenesis, you don't have to remember that term, by the way, but it's good to remember it. But you have to know that process. You have to know what it means, though. Uh, you, gluconeogenesis is what happens when amino acids in your liver cells or fatty acids in your liver cells can also be reconverted back into glucose. Yes, your liver cells can actually do something spectacular like this. And of course, when your liver cells create glucose from amino acids and fatty acids, what happens? The glucose will then diffuse into the blood and increase the blood glucose concentration, making it go back to normal. Therefore, when your blood glucose concentration is low, it's a stimulus which is detected by the islets of Langerhans, and then the alpha cells will secrete more glucagon. The glucagon travels in the blood towards the liver cells, which binds to the receptor. And one of the function is to break down glycogen into glucose. And another function is to convert amino acids and fatty acids back into glucose so that when the glucose diffuses into the blood, it increases the blood glucose concentration back to normal. This is how glucagon works in the liver cells. But the problem here is you will have to know them in detail. Uh, you will have to know how the glucagon causes the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. That means you have to know process step number one all the way until step number six over here. All right. And you also have to know a little bit about the gluconeogenesis. You, you can mention that in the exam too, by the way. Okay. So sometimes the question may also ask you about adrenaline okay yes i know it's a bit annoying but sometimes they may talk about adrenaline right so um 
uh, sometimes the adrenaline, we, they may ask you, what's the effect of adrenaline on liver cells? Now, adrenaline is a hormone, uh, just to do a little bit of O-level division. Adrenaline is a hormone that when something scary or something anxious happens, you're being chased by a, I don't know, that's, that's a monster of some sort, okay? We release a hormone known as adrenaline because it's the fight or flight hormone. And one of the functions of adrenaline is to help increase our blood glucose concentration. So, we have so the reason why is so we have more energy to run away from the monster or to face the scary situation, right? Or, you know, just have more energy sitting in the room scared out of our wits. Okay, I don't know. Um, but the effect of adrenaline, so sometimes they may ask you, what's the effect of adrenaline on the liver cells? And immediately students will go, oh my God, this is so much to study. The good news here is as follows. Now, the effect of adrenaline is almost the same as the effect of glucagon. Okay, look, in this diagram here, I'm showing you how glucagon affects the liver cells, correct? Because you can see glucagon binds to the receptor. And then process number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, and number seven happens. Adrenaline is the same thing. The only difference is, number one, adrenaline is a different shape. It binds to the adrenal receptor protein. That's all it is. Number two, adenyl, it activate, G protein activates adenyl cyclase. Number three, uh, the enzyme converts ATP to CAMP. Number four, CAMP is a secondary messenger. All that's the same. Cascade reaction happens, activates glycogen phosphorylase, still the same. And the glycogen phosphorylase breaks down glycogen into glucose to increase the blood glucose concentration. It's all exactly the same. So the effect of glucagon is glucagon binds to glucagon receptors on the liver cells. The effect of adrenaline on liver cells is the same, but adrenaline just binds to adrenaline receptor protein. Everything else is very much the same, all right? So it's the same as glucagon except the receptor. That's all.